some infinities are larger than other infinities. This is a phrase that's come up a lot in pop culture lately, and people tend to just blow it off, but it holds a lot more value than just some teenage angst lingo. Sometimes the trip from my house to school seems like an infinity, but that infinity is much smaller than the infinity of suburbs between me and the so-called wild. Yes, that is just metaphorical, but what about the mathematically literal? Some of these different sized infinities are theoretically countable. For instance, consider the infinite distance between zero and one. Where do we begin counting? 0.00001? 0.00000001? The origin possibilities are themselves infinite. If we can't know the starting point, we can't count that infinity. However, all this quantifying of infinity isn't what keeps me up at night. We only need that as background to get a basic understanding of my main problem, the Banach-Tarski paradox. I live in a subdivision of a subdivision of a subdivision, and so on forever. And every day I might see a new house, a new McRestaurant, or a new face that looks just like the others. These things seem to come out of nowhere, but that's impossible, isn't it? Well, according to the Banach-Tarski paradox, maybe it isn't. In the theorem, you can take one sphere and turn it into two. It doesn't mean you can take one sphere and divide it in half to make two. It doesn't mean you end up with two smaller spheres. It means that, mathematically, you can take one sphere of x volume and divide it in such a way that you end up with two spheres the same size as the first, both with that exact x volume. That has to be impossible, right? Well, it's not. The mathematics in the paradox show that in the universe of numbers, it can happen. And not just with spheres, but any shape. If it can happen in the universe of numbers, can it happen in our lives? This house is the same as all the others in my neighborhood. Two stories, three bedrooms, a bath and a half, a place for you to park your SUV. We'll put a starting point on the house. From this point, we'll go up, down, left, and right in every possible pattern. So say, for example, in a house you could go up and enter it, go left to the stairs, up them, and right to your bedroom, only to be haunted by Stefan Bonnock and Alfred Tarski. Every pattern that ends with the right point will mark in red, green for left, orange for up, and blue for down. Since we did every pattern, there is an infinite amount of points for each color. However, there is a much louder infinite amount of points on any given object. So we mark all those with new starting points, in yellow, and do the patterns again. Now every point on the house is marked except for the countably infinite amount of poles. To deal with this, you mark the countably infinite amount of poles their own color. You would then remove each of the color-coded sets and put them aside. If you look at the left house, it's completely made of points that end in L. If you rotate the house right, it's the same as adding an R to the end of every point name, canceling it out. This makes it into a house that is accessed by every point ending in L, U, and D rotation, and any point that is accessed by no rotation, the starting points. That's almost everything. If we add the right house and the poles house, that is everything. We are now left with a complete house and have parts left over to spare for another. So we rotate the up house down. This cancels out and turns the house into a copy of the up piece, right piece, the left piece, and the starting points. However, this would give us an extra set of starting points since we already had one. So let's just start over. We'll remove everything that's only up. We can put that into the leftover down house. We now rotate the up house down, making it how it was before, add in the down piece that is mixed in with the strings of up, along with the starting point piece, and now we have another complete house. Except for the poles of rotation and the center, but no worries, there's a way to fill these holes in. If you remove one point from a circle, it would seem like there'd be a gap in the circle circumference. But a circle circumference is irrational. 
So we can mark a point at each radius length going clockwise around the circle, and we'll never end on the same point twice. We can mark off every point with a whole number, and the set will be infinite, but countable. And if you shift all the points over counterclockwise, the holes will be filled. Point 1 fills in the hole, point 2 fills in for point 1, point 3 fills in for point 2, and so on. Using this method, we can fill in the missing pole holes and complete the second house. We just took one house and turned it into two without adding anything. And while this is all theoretical, the implications of the Bonnik-Tarski paradox, if real, would be big. It would change everything we think we know about the real world. Concepts like volume and number are things we consider intuitive. But what if this mathematical theorem was physically possible? Could our intuition be false? Could our understanding of these basic concepts be wrong? If humanity could double anything, what would it be? Would it be gold, oil, or wealth? If we were to double wealth, it would paradoxically be losing its value. If we were to double anything, it would be losing value. It would become as meaningless as my subdivision of a subdivision of a subdivision. Something being unique is what makes it important. And if nothing was unique, then would anything be important? But what if we were able to use this theoretical concept of doubling to increase value? What if we doubled our curiosity, our knowledge, our wisdom? When our control of the world catches up with the mathematics, what will we see?